Ladies and gentlemen, tips and tricks at two on Tuesday, right here at Be So Creative. So glad you could join us. Today, I have a return and report for you. Remember this little quilt? Remember how I told you what it was gonna look like with the little tiny piping on it? Is that not so cute? I'm really loving that little tiny so cute. And what I'm hoping you're able to see is the dimension in that little binding. My, I can really feel it and I really like how it feels. Um, there are some of our quilts that came in for our quilt challenge and you'll notice that they chose to lay a flat little piping on, which is awesome. It's just a different kind of feel, but if you want that little tiny ridge, that cord in there is really gorgeous. But while I was working on this little guy at home, I realized that there were some things I wanted to show you. We have talked about how to machine bind our quilts, but we haven't talked about how to hand sew them with the invisible binding stitch, which really probably has a real name. I don't know it, so I just call it the invisible binding stitch and you have to say it in that voice or it's not really funny otherwise it's just boring okay say it with me the invisible binding stitch okay so we're going to switch cameras and i'm going to talk to you about needles and thimbles first marco here we go here we have a little needle collection and i was given an offer to use this needle set on my um binding and that was when I realized, well, okay, I knew, but that's when I admitted I am a needle snob. I want you to notice how long that needle is, and I want you, I don't know if you really can tell, yeah. how thick that needle is. This is a really good needle for lots of things. The invisible binding stitch is not one of them. I also want you to guys to know, for those of you who are beginning to struggle with your eyesight and are like, I just don't even ever want to sew anything by hand because I simply can't get it threaded, that we have side threading needles. And this smallest one is acceptable. And what I want to show you with that, oh, I should have chosen thread that was not so pale. Sorry guys, wah, wah, wah. Okay. I bet I can do it anyway. Oh, except Becky might also get me some darker thread. With these side threading needles, you just walk the thread into the needle. See that? I am threaded. And when it's time to get out, you walk it out. And here, Becky has provided us with some darker thread. So one more time. Marco, are we in focus? Can we see things? Yeah, you can get a little bit How's that? Yeah, that's right. Okay, do you see that little swirl in there? So I just can walk the thread right against the edge of the needle. It locks in, and now I'm ready to pull it through. One more time, we get to see the magic. Do, 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 do. Ta da! And confetti goes everywhere. Okay, so for those of you guys who are struggling with threading needles, why don't you give these guys a try and see how friendly they are? If you'll notice that in order to um, pull them out of the eye, I had to go sideways, which is not a normal stitching direction. So um, my feeling, I haven't tried them yet, but my feeling is that you're going to be fine with lots and lots of straight stitching. You're not going to be losing your thread a lot. But this, this teeny little needle is really my preferred one for the invisible binding stitch, which happens to be an applique needle. You see how much smaller it is in diameter and also it's short. My experience is that I make smaller stitches when I use a shorter needle. So this one is good. Also quilting between needles are gonna be really good. And um, I find that my stitch quality greatly improves when I choose the right needle for the right job. So I wanna set that aside for just a second and then we're gonna talk about threading the needle. But dun dun dun, we're gonna take a moment to look at thimbles. Thimbles, what? My grandma used to use one of those and I hated them. 
Well, my grandma didn't use one of those because she hated them. Becky, I forgot to get the thimble that Marsha loves the most off the wall, the pink one. It's not in there, I already peeked. So Becky's gonna go be my runner backstage. Imagine the chariots of fire music while she goes. This one is the thimble I love the most. Why? Because when it fits my hand, it's not bumping my knuckles. So this is the one I tend to use. This one, see where it says made in China? See how it looks like a child's toy? See how the dimples are small and poorly formed? See how the dimples are far apart? This one is junk. Don't use it. Don't even try. It will make you cry inside. Get rid of it. This one, I'd like you to see, has the little grooves on the side. So we've got little dimples. So if you happen to be the sort of person who pushes your needles this way, perfect. Then this is going to work um, well for that. But these ridges are made to catch the needle. Coop, 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 and kind of give you a different push with it. So those, and this is mostly just so that you have an idea of what those different grooves in your um, thimble is going to be. I never wear this one. Why? Because right now it's squishing my finger up top. It makes me feel confined, sad, trapped. I don't like it. It makes my finger sweaty. Get rid of it. This one, I've got some room to move. So I'm happy with this guy. And if you do a great deal of um, stitch work, by hand, they actually recommend you have two thimbles, your winter one and your summer one. Why? Because of fat sausage, summer sweaty fingers. That's why. There's this guy that's plastic that I bought um, with the idea that maybe my finger would be less sweaty. Ah, uh, I'd give it about a C. If I can't find my good friend, then I'll make use of this one. This one, okay, not sweaty. My fingernail can come through. My finger is not being trapped, except I have actually worn my way through the leather and poked my finger anyway. So I give this one about a C2. This one is Marsha's favorite. What? It's a cheap little plastic guy. It only costs $1.99 and still, it's Marsha's favorite in all the world. Why, you ask? I'm so glad you asked. Because do you see that open space? Her whole fingernail gets to scoot out. See that little opening right there? This is dumb. Hold on, let's open it. Okay. Ah. See this little guy where it splits open? That means my big finger where my finger is big, I can get room in, in it. My fingernail slides over the top. We have the little dimples close together on top to catch the needle wherever I want it to. And we've got the side ridges to catch the needle going down the side. This one's Marsha's favorite. This is why she carries this one in the store. So if you are on a thimble hunt, go ahead and give it a go. Today, I'm gonna use my old friend. Oh, P.S. What is this strangely discolored piece of plasticky stuff? Needle grabbers! This is a favorite friend for when you have summer sausage fingers and they're starting to get a little sweaty and your needle is just like not pulling through. Grab the needle. I'll try to remember to show it to you today. Okay, so back to the quilt. <clears throat> Please notice right along this edge can you see the little ripples of where the stitches are placed? If I pull on it, maybe you can find the threads. Not really though, you just can see where they're placed. It's the invisible binding stitch. Let's do it. Okay. Sorry guys, I know I keep disappearing out of the camera, but I'm not calibrated for it yet. Okay, so, oh, there we go, get everything going. First thing I wanna show you, which might be easier if we have a dark background. So we're gonna borrow this piece of foam. Is that terrible? Okay, I have a tendency to pull my thread in very close against my fingers. Are we okay and in focus? 
Then I lay the needle onto the thread. See how easy that was? Shoop. This means that instead of chasing the eye around with my thread, I hold my thread stable and I put it on. The next piece I need you to see, which is why... <laughs> okay, this is called the quilter's knot. How are we for focus? We good? Uh, Drop it down. Yeah. Mm, do you want the black one back? Yeah, we might just do it on here because I can. Okay. It's a lot more clear on here. Okay, Marco was telling me it's a lot more clear if we go over here. So what I want you to see is I have my needle pointing the direction of my thread. They're pointing each other, or maybe they're kissing. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I don't know. So they lay alongside of each other, and I grab both with one hand. My thread is in one big loop. Then I wrap around one, two, three times, and now I'm going to pinch that wrap between my two fingers, and then stitch between my fingers. Dun, dun, dun. And because the camera is looking at me, I did it wrong. Here we go. Kissing each other. <coughs> then getting all wrapped up. One, two, three. Hold it with your fingers and push it on through. That is going to place one beautiful little barrel knot on my fingertip. Yahoo! That beautiful barrel knot, we are coming down over here. I'm going to start out and away in between all of the layers, and I'm going to come up in the fold. And I mean like literally in the fold. How are we foreseeing this, guys? Okay. So, in the fold right there, that's what we want to do. And I could put on my stiffy thimble. And I'm going to come until the thread catches the fabric. Do you see that it's caught right there? So now I brace the fabric between thumb and finger, lift just the fabric. Are we seeing it? And pull the knot through pop. In it goes, disappears. Bring my thread in and swipe. Shoop. Shoop. Okay, normally it's one swipe, but you guys are watching me. Okay, all gone. I now have a disappeared thread. Is that okay or should we do it again? Do it again. Okay, <laughs> let's do it again. Let's cut it off. Let's kiss threads, the end and the needle. <coughs> Wrap it around. One, two, three. Hold it in the hand. Stitch through the fingers. Perfect little knot. Start away. Come towards. And I'm between the layers, guys. That's the important part. And I'm going to bring the needle out right there in the fold part. If I come to the top of it, okay, I won't tell you that part yet. Bring it here, brace between finger and thumb, only then I don't do it because the quilt's holding itself up, and pop it through. Woohoo! Okay, now we get to the real business. Which camera are we using? Uh, I'm using both of them. Using both. He's just going to go between the two. Awesome. Okay. To get to the real business of the invisible binding stitch, the key element is to pick up a little bit of the background on the underside. So see, you can't see my needle. Tuck it and under, and then come back on top so that you're catching the underside or right at the fold of the binding. Push that guy on through and make your stitch. Did you see it disappear? It's because it's the disappearing binding stitch. Again, pick it up from the back side and reach till you can come and just pick up on the fold and bring it on through. And you will notice, perhaps you will notice, there's my colored thread. I'm gone. One more time. Pick it on through and gone. Now, Sometimes I say to myself, but I don't want to do one at a time. Okay, I'll show you. Pick it up. 
pick up the underside. I don't know if you can see where my needle is. Mm, there, now it's shiny, at least for me. And then you can drive it back into the quilt and back up again. And that way you can do two at a time. And this is where having the short needle helps a lot because a short needle helps. It's like, I don't know, it's like wearing high heels and you just can't take giant steps when you're wearing those super high stilettos, right? You just got to take those little tiny bites. So by keeping your needle short, you're able to do that same thing. Now, do you see where that thread is pulling away a little bit? That is more, more likely when you're doing the back and forth which is why I will tell you that you're gonna get a cleaner, better stitch if you work it one at a time. The important part that you're looking for is can I see my needle on top? Are we just gonna make the switch? Awesome. Do I do it again? Okay, so he thinks we're good. Oh, but I was gonna show you guys how to use your little grabber, okay? So the little grabber, See, see how these stitches are starting to show? That is because I am not paying attention to my stitch work. I need to return my attention to my breath and my needle. Okay, so here's where I bring my needle up. And now I can use my grabber and help pull it through. But you see how my fingers are doing this thing? That is because when I was a little girl and my grandma taught me how to do some of my first stitches, I remember the frustration of pulling the needle right off the thread, shoop, right off the thread. And I was not a girl who said bad words, but I might have thought them. And so what I learned, oops, I'm sorry, I'm getting out of the way again. Rethreading my needle right close to my hand, laying the needle on. I learned that the more I could hold the eye and the thread together, the more often I would have success. So as I make my invisible binding stitch, I have a tendency to want to hang on to that double part until I can switch, slide my hand down. Okay, that's the deal my friends. That is how you are going to get your stitches invisible upon your binding. Did you say it in your head? I hoped you did. <laughs> All right. I do want to take uh, just a moment and we're going to talk really quickly about let's pretend you have inherited some handwork that is amazing, beautiful, wonderful, lovely, precious. You want to keep it perfect for all the days or it's not so beautiful, lovely and perfect and it's kind of ratty and needs not ratty, but it's kind of stained. So we are going to talk super quick about Oh, oh, I forgot. In case you hate the thimble, you also have a thimble pad option. I haven't tried it. If you try it, let me know. Tell me how it works and find out whether or not I should come get one, okay? So we have right here Orvis and Quilt Soap and a Soak. All of these are appropriate for your vintage hand done work. Why, you say? I'm so glad you asked. It has a lot to do with pH and rinsability. If we use um, products on our vintage linens or anything else that we want to be especially color fast or especially um, strong for a long period of time, the more we get into acidic things and the more we get into harsh chemicals, the more likely we are to damage the fibers and the colors. Each of these, the quilt soap, the Orvis paste, and the soak, is specifically designed for leaving you with um, fibers that are, well, okay, almost, hold on. It's designed for leaving you with fibers that are clear of any residue and at a pH neutral. Orvis, I said it was designed, but it really wasn't. This is horse soap that also happens to be really awesome with the threads. It bubbles like crazy mad, so it's a great one to use just a little tiny bit. So things are gonna go for a long, long way. Um, pH neutral, 
do not add vinegar to it. So sometimes quilters will add vinegar to set the dyes. If you add that to your Orvis, you're going to negate its pH neutral system and the acidic of the vinegar is going to like mess you up and all things are going to go bad and then your laundry is going to explode when you're going to have like lab hair. Not really, no exploding, but it's a funny thing to think about. The soak is one that you don't even have to rinse out. You can just put those, um, those fibers in it, let it soak, and you are good to go. Um, both of these guys are usable in your washing machine. Just like I said, you're not going to need to use very much of it at all. Um, so Orvis paste and Orvis in paste. This one, um, I hear tell some folks have had theirs for quite some time because you're using so little of it. And then just as a side note, we have a wow stick, yay! And it smells good. And it's just a pretty simple, see the little stick in there? Pretty simple stain remover stick. Again, appropriate for um, your things that you're trying to take better care of. As a side note, if you are a human being who has a lot of skin irritants and a lot of skin allergies, these um, pH neutral products are things that you can use in your regular laundry for your everyday wear. Um, Marsha particularly likes this one for um, black jeans because it's going to be a lot less likely to remove the black from the black jeans. So you can use it for regular laundry and being pH neutral and having all the Everything rinse out of the fiber means against your skin, you're going to be happier. And that, my friends, is the end of tips and tricks on this Tuesday at 2 whatever time it is now. Come see me again next time. Bye.